Hey guys, Ian Bell, Mutant Nation. Now you don't know who I am. I'm usually one of the guys behind the scenes. Normally I don't ride in a limo either, uh, but normally I don't ride in a limo with Sean Ray. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we've been building the anticipation. We just dropped. Sean let his crew know the world of Mutant Nation that he has joined. He is all in with Mutant and we've been uh, kind of keeping the noise to ourselves for a while here, but we couldn't wait any longer. So Sean is here in Vancouver, beautiful British Columbia. We actually don't have any rain too, which is like a miracle for this place. Uh, and Sean is uh, he's headed to Mutant HQ to meet with big uh, CEO Jim McMahon, big Ron, uh, our whole crew and team that's eagerly anticipating uh, meeting Sean Ray, IFBB pro and legend. Uh, and he's here with me now. Yeah, man, it's good to be here. Um, Man, we've been sitting on this for a little bit because it took a while to get to where we're at today. Yeah. Um, but like you said, being all in requires that we dot the I and cross the T. Yeah. Mr. Sean Magic. Ray. Magic doors. <laughs> hey, welcome to Mutant Nation headquarters. All right, all right. Sean. Big Jim. You I'm good, I'm good. We can do that now. We're allowed to do that now. <laughs> Welcome to Mutant right. Nation, man. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, let's check it out. All right. The new home office. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Take yep. the center chair in there, young man. This is it. <sighs> and well, everybody, Mutant Nation, in case you didn't already guess, we got Sean Ray here today. Welcome, Sean. Thank you. And flanked on the other side, Big Ron Partlow, Rep 300. I'm, I'm still here, Mutant Nation. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> we got the voice of Mutant Nation over there with Ron. And All then right. uh, Sean, Global Ambassador. Absolutely. Welcome. I'm absolutely I, thrilled to go through some workouts with Ron. Oh, wow, well, you know. We're going to be putting this, <laughs> we're going to put some work in. Uh, it's not every day you get to be with a Hall of Famer. So um, Mutant Nation does do things a little differently, at least we like to think we do. And we want to take a, a bigger leap into where we want to go on our mission. And we got a vision of where we want to be. Uh, so with Ron's help and Sean's help and everybody in Mutant Nation pulling in the same direction, this is the home of camaraderie. Man, th this is all about lifting and living and loving. Well, I like the idea, uh, Jim, that you guys were receptive to the idea that it's not just about me. It's about those next guys coming up behind me, yeah. being able to reach out, extend an olive branch, help these guys up. The idea is to go out there, find the up and coming talent and uh, help them on their, their journey, like I had back in the day with uh, Joe Weider, who mentored me and, and gave me an opportunity. Uh, and that's a large part of why I'm here, is because that opportunity presents itself for other mutants out there to join the nation. No doubt, no doubt. And, and we truly love bodybuilding at Mutant, you know? Like, that's what the brand always, always was about, was just the, the, the training hard, but it doesn't mean competitive bodybuilding only. It's the bodybuilding lifestyle, you know, loving the iron, like Jim was saying. I feel it because that's what I fell in love with. That's yeah. why I became uh, a bodybuilder. And to be in the position I'm at with uh, commentating and, and traveling the world and watching the next talent come up, it's nice to be able to have a platform where I could welcome them to the family. You talked about camaraderie. Welcome them with an opportunity to help them on their nutritional goals and watch the products actually work with their careers as they come up. We may as well get this done. Absolutely, what do I gotta do here? Well, you actually just gotta sign, and it's about bloody time, I must say. All right, let's make All it right. official. So, there you go over there. Double. Sean, you know after this, you gotta, you gotta give us one. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna, it's, I'm not gonna start break dancing or anything, but. <laughs> Well, first of all, all right. we gotta do that. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let's do this. Okay. I, I need Jim to come in here too. Oh, you get you. Are you ready? Okay, ready? All right. Take this hand like this and put it here. Right. Take this hand and put it right here. You want to push and you want to push and then you gotta go. Cheryl. Cheryl, this is Sean. Hello. Hello. Hi. He's there, How are you doing? Behind the, uh... You're in here formulating? 
But yeah, uh, all the raw materials behind you, so we've got you know, fresh samples of most things up there. Okay. So we come up with the ideas and uh, make share on her team. Yeah, so the advantage for us is we don't have to send it up to a third party to do all this. Right. So we can pivot faster than almost any other brand on the planet when it comes to, oh, we're out of blue raspberry. There's no more blue raspberry flavor maybe coming in because of all these COVID you know, uh, disruptions and mm -hmm. raw material. And maybe we got to develop a peach mango flavor. You got all the ingredients for that? We're done in four hours if need be. Nice. Not, not four months like a lot of other places. Okay. So, and with 25 years of manufacturing, a lot of this is just second nature for what we do. Right. So we're not learning. As you know, we don't have to go back to the, the, the original drawing board on day one. Now, you gonna do a little tasting? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. I put one serving in. Oh, right here? Right here, yeah. This is for yeah. me. Yeah. So, Cheryl? Yes. Get in there. So, this is our new Midnight Pre Workout. It's, flavor. it's a tropical cyclone flavor. All right, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Holy, <laughs> you see that? <laughs> no, the taste is good. It's not, it's not tart. It's a little bit sweet. Yeah. But it's got good it's balance. Bad. That's the thing. This is gonna be designed for the pre-workout. Was the caffeine loaded? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of good caffeine in here. Oh yeah. There's a, there's, this particular yeah. formula is designed for a part of the category of pre-workouts I think a lot of people have overlooked. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people just jam as many stims as they can in their pre-workout. They say, oh, you know, it's a new pre-workout. Sorry, nothing against all stim products out there. <laughs> we got a heavy dose of stims in here, but we're not relying on that. So this was purposely designed for those who want to push more weight in the gym. Nice. Not everybody's designed a pre-workout exactly this way. All right. Cool, cool. So yeah. This whole structure wasn't here. None of this was here. Okay. And that wall wasn't there. All right, that separates what, to the outside? No, nope, that's uh, Another way actual shipping. warehousing. Okay. So inside of here is 12,000 square feet of actual inside production. Mm -hmm. So two stories upstairs is where all the, the way up and, and, and loading the blenders happen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the end and we'll show you one of the finishing packaging lines here. Okay. So. We got quite a few going on, but this is a, uh, oh, it looks like they're doing some mutant EAAs in here. So we didn't put on the hairnet, so we're not gonna yeah. go in there. But you can see real production. Absolutely. Right here, this is where it happens. And there's over 700 SKUs or 700 different products in mutant. Okay. So a little much going on. That's all the different flavors and different sizes. It's so all, all good stuff for non-GMO. We're actually also a certified organic facility, so we can handle certified organic ingredients as well. Right. We're also a lot of drug tested products here as well. So, you know, we don't, we don't have any banned substances at all in the building. Okay. So everything we make, whether it's drug tested or not, is absolutely safe anyways. So we got two different types of blenders. I'm not going to show you the small ones, because okay. <laughs> those are the small ones. But here, I'll just poke your head in here. And each of these two bad boys are what we call the widow makers. Yeah. Uh, and we got these custom built. Like, th these aren't like $50,000 blenders. These are $400,000 each. Holy crap. Yeah. So you can see we got a lot of What's in the totes, super sacks. So, we preload the blender with all the ingredients, obviously. Right. And what comes out, as we saw in the last plate, with two totes come out. These are them. And they'll get staged, they'll get quality control checked, tested. Uh, you do heavy metal testing, food safety testing. Uh, sometimes for different countries, there's specific extra testing that we have to do. Right. So this Holy is uh, raw materials, packaging, and also finished goods. Those are the empty mutant mass bags. Okay. I think we saw a little bit of mutant mass here. Yeah, man, geez. So again, we can turn and burn pretty fast. These will go from here to the truck to the Well, th th that's, that, those are empties. Okay. Those, are that, those are pallets of empty bags waiting to go back into production to get filled. Ah, gotcha. And then all the finished goods come in here. So when you were talking about the shipping shortage, you're ahead of the curve. If there is a shortage, you have enough stuff to continue. Pro so far, so good. We make no permanent guarantees in this life since yeah. life's not giving us any guarantees Absolutely. yet. Absolutely. 
So yeah, we're, we're pot committed to making sure we have a ton of inventory. Yeah. I mean, that was a conscious decision. Uh, and, you know, uh, we, we don't, we're not a public company. Uh -huh. This is a family operation. Right. All right, guys, we are live here at Newton headquarters. I'm giving a little something extra for you guys today. Some of our customers, uh, we're going to start off with Kenny Castillo. I'm going to send you out some new product. Here you go, right here in the madness. I'm going to give you my little signature on top here. So, big warehouse style gym. Yeah, I like the high ceilings. Yeah, you know, it's got that big noisy feel. It's not a library in here, so. Uh, I, like the, I like the fact that it's co-ed. Nice, yeah. <laughs> nice mix of testosterone and estrogen. Yes, yes, the best of both worlds. So uh, you, you, you were mentioning to me that you kind of you found your first bodybuilder gym was a warehouse style gym. It was, where you have the doors that are open, you get the fresh air, you got the big, not that big. Yeah, yeah. But you have the ceiling fan and you have the music pumping, you walk in and you can't feel, you can feel the electricity. Yeah. And yeah, you man. can breathe the air, right? It reminds me of Venice Beach. Nice fresh air coming in. I feel like working out. Yeah, <laughs> well, hey, yeah, I might talk you into one, eh? <laughs> You know, I, I always say on my show, I always say a gym's only as good as its leg area. Absolutely. So uh, this is it? It's our leg side of the gym, yeah. This is where the magic happens. So it looks like you got a mix of different brands of equipment. We got everything, and that's because we're all about the piece of equipment, not the line of equipment, right? Okay. You know, we don't want to look like, uh, you know, those those gyms that have just one brand and they all match. Yeah, you, you know? variety. And uh, this is the type of gym where the leg side's always busy. Yeah. Right, you it's, know, a real bodybuilding it. gym, right? <laughs> Then all the hammer strength, you know, the plate loaded. What do they go up to? 200. 200 pounders. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And we've had a couple guys put them up too, you know, they okay. say build it and they will come. Yeah. If you don't have them, no one can do them. So. Yeah, you're in Ronnie right. Coleman territory Yeah, a couple strong guys, Ian Valer, yeah. of course. Ian Valer came in and was punching them out on the flat bench. And then uh, Rami, of course, had yeah, that. Yeah, hanging Ra out in the deep Rami, end. I saw Rami look at them and he, he kind of looked and he laughed and he said, chest day's Monday. And then on Monday he was in here. Now, I know you competed against Haney, Dorian, and Ronnie. I did. So you saw like the evolution of modern bodybuilding That's from- 22 consecutive wins. 22. Now, um, you know, I, I, of all the guys you've seen, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking like the craziest possible things you've seen. I'm thinking Marcus Rule, yeah. Nasser, Big Paul Dillette. What, Big Paul Dillette. What would you say would be, you know, you looking back on your career, was the, the freakiest amount of muscle on a frame you think you ever saw on, on well, that stage? I gotta tell you, 1991 when I won the Arnold, I thought I was gonna be Mr. Olympia because I was underwhelmed by Lee Haney in 1990, the drug test in Olympia. Right. But by the time I rolled into 1991 in Orlando, Florida, the arrival of Dorian Yates, all eyes were on Lee Haney when he took his clothes off because we figured he was gonna look like he did a year ago. Right. Lee Haney, bar none, in 1991, is etched into my brain that when he took his clothes off, whatever air I had in my sails was instantly gone. Yeah. I never seen anything as impressive as Lee Haney unrobing next to me and Vince Taylor backstage at the 91 Olympia. Uh, I never felt more defeated. Really? Yeah, Ronnie Coleman was a pleasant surprise in 98, but I'd seen Ronnie Coleman from 92. And he all was the way always shredded. He always looked great. Yeah. yeah. It, it, Ronnie didn't, the wow factor wasn't there standing next to him. It translated on film yes. and in photographs, yeah. but in person it didn't, it didn't translate as much as it did the great Lee Haney on his last Olympia yeah. when everyone knew he was retiring and he was going to be the winner. That was Incredible one, progress for really. Lee. That was one of the awesome occasions where a, a longtime champion went Got out better. went out at his actual very best. Yeah, it very rarely happens yeah. that you see that. And I'll tell you, Lee Haney's transformation from 90 to 91 was more impressive to me than Ronnie Coleman's transformation from 97 to 98. Right. Because what Ronnie did is he just dried out. He yeah. was already there in 97. He'd already beaten Flex Wheeler. He'd already beaten Kevin Lebroni. Yeah. Um, and he stood in the top six in 1996. Ronnie Coleman was sixth place that year. Yeah, yeah. So we saw him coming. But what Haney did is he supersized himself in 91, and he went on to another level, and we were all happy to see him retire. And he went out with a bang. He went out with a bang. Yeah, that's Impressive. awesome, man. I got a million questions for you. <laughs> I, I love to hear these types of stories. I, I'm a true bodybuilding historian, and uh, that's why I'm so happy to bring you down to the gym and just show you our little piece of uh, bodybuilding magic here. So, the, you know. Well, in the words of Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mutant Nation. <laughs>